Welcome to this video on patient education and counseling for different classes of drugs. As a nursing student preparing for the NCLEX exam, you know that pharmacology is a critical component of your education. It's not just about memorizing drug names and side effects, but also about understanding how to address patients' needs and the importance of counseling them. In this video, we will be discussing the different classes of drugs and how to educate and counsel patients on their use. We will cover everything from antibiotics to anticoagulants, and from pain management to mental health medications. It is crucial that you have a solid understanding of different drug classes and their effects to provide the best care possible. In addition to the valuable information we will be providing in this video, we have also created a cheat sheet summarizing the key points. You can find the link to download the cheat sheet in the video description below. Before we dive in, we want to ask for your support. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video to help improve its rank on YouTube algorithms. By doing so, you can help us reach more nursing students who need this valuable information. Thank you for watching, and let's get started. Antibiotics. Patients prescribed antibiotics should be educated on the importance of taking the full course of antibiotics as prescribed, even if they start feeling better. This is because stopping antibiotics prematurely can lead to antibiotic resistance, where the bacteria becomes resistant to the antibiotic. For example, Patients prescribed amoxicillin for a bacterial infection should be instructed to take the full course of antibiotics, even if their symptoms improve after a few days. Antidepressants. Patients prescribed antidepressants should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication and how to manage them. For example, patients prescribed selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors may experience nausea, dizziness, or sexual dysfunction. Patients should be informed that these side effects usually resolve after a few weeks of treatment and that they should not stop taking the medication without first consulting their healthcare provider. Let's take a scenario reflecting the next generation NCLEX case study. Jane is a 25-year-old woman who recently went to the doctor with a sinus infection. The doctor prescribed amoxicillin and instructed her to take the full course of antibiotics, even if she starts feeling better before finishing the medication. The doctor also prescribed a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor to help manage Jane's symptoms of anxiety and depression. Question 1. Why is it important to take the full course of antibiotics, even if you start feeling better before finishing the medication? A. It helps to reduce the cost of treatment B. It reduces the risk of bacterial infection. C. It reduces the likelihood of antibiotic resistance D. It makes you feel better faster. The correct answer is C. It reduces the likelihood of antibiotic resistance. Taking the full course of antibiotics is important because it ensures that all the bacteria causing the infection are killed, even if symptoms improve before the medication is finished. Stopping antibiotics prematurely can lead to antibiotic resistance, where the bacteria becomes resistant to the antibiotic, making it difficult to treat future infections. Question 2. What should patients be counseled on when prescribed antidepressants? Your options are A. The importance of taking the medication with food B. The possible side effects of the medication C. The need to stop taking the medication if side effects occur D. The need to increase the dosage over time. The right answer is B. The possible side effects of the medication. If you want to further enhance your knowledge on patient counseling with case studies, more examples, and practice questions, we personally recommend a book that we believe can help you pass the next generation NCLEX exam with ease. The book's name is Mastering New Next Generation NCLEX RN Pharmacology, Theory, Strategies, and Examples with Case Studies, New 20, 23, and 24 Guide. This book provides over 200 strategies with examples for each strategy to pass the next generation NCLEX R in exam, over 150 case study questions, over 50 in-detailed theoretical explanations of pharmacology topics with right illustrations, and practice questions with rationale and explanations of why each option may be right or wrong. You can find the link to this book in the video description below. We highly recommend it to anyone looking to master pharmacology and pass the NCLEX exam. Beta blockers. Patients prescribed beta blockers should be educated on the importance of monitoring their blood pressure and heart rate regularly. For example, 
Patients prescribed metoprolol for hypertension should be instructed to check their blood pressure at home regularly and report any significant changes to their healthcare provider. Insulin. Patients prescribed insulin should be counseled on proper administration techniques, such as injection site rotation and proper dosage calculations. For example, patients with type 1 diabetes who require insulin injections should be instructed to rotate injection sites to prevent lipohypertrophy, which is a buildup of fat at the injection site. Opioids. Patients prescribed opioids should be educated on the risks of addiction and overdose, as well as the importance of proper storage and disposal of the medication. For example, patients prescribed oxycodone for pain management should be instructed to keep the medication in a secure location, away from children and pets, and to dispose of any unused medication properly to prevent accidental ingestion or misuse. Anticoagulants. Patients prescribed anticoagulants should be counseled on the signs and symptoms of bleeding and the importance of monitoring for signs of bleeding. For example, patients prescribed warfarin should be instructed to monitor for signs of bruising, bleeding gums, or blood in their urine or stool, and to report any signs of bleeding immediately to their healthcare provider. Antihypertensives. Patients prescribed antihypertensives should be educated on the importance of monitoring their blood pressure regularly and following lifestyle modifications such as a low-sodium diet, regular exercise, and stress reduction. For example, patients prescribed lisinopril for hypertension should be instructed to monitor their blood pressure at home regularly and to make lifestyle modifications such as reducing their salt intake and increasing physical activity. Bronchodilators. Patients prescribed bronchodilators should be counseled on proper inhaler technique and the importance of using a spacer. For example, patients prescribed albuterol for asthma should be instructed on how to use their inhaler properly and how to use a spacer to ensure that the medication is delivered effectively to the lungs. Samantha is a 35-year-old woman who has been diagnosed with asthma. Her doctor prescribed albuterol inhaler to be taken as needed for asthma symptoms. During her follow-up appointment, the doctor noticed that Samantha was not using her inhaler properly and did not know about the importance of using a spacer. The nurse counseled Samantha on proper inhaler technique and gave her a spacer to use with her inhaler. What is the importance of using a spacer with an albuterol inhaler for asthma patients? A. It increases the dosage of medication delivered to the lungs. V. It reduces the risk of side effects from the medication. C. It ensures that the medication is delivered effectively to the lungs D. It decreases the time it takes for the medication to work. The correct answer is C. It ensures that the medication is delivered effectively to the lungs. Using a spacer with an inhaler helps to ensure that the medication is delivered effectively to the lungs, increasing the chances of symptom relief. The spacer also helps to reduce the amount of medication that is lost in the mouth and throat, decreasing the risk of side effects. While it may seem logical that using a spacer would increase the dosage of medication delivered to the lungs or decrease the time it takes for the medication to work, this is not actually the case. Therefore, options A and D are incorrect. Option B is partially correct in that it can help reduce side effects, but the main purpose of using a spacer is to ensure effective delivery of the medication to the lungs. Antidiabetic agents Patients prescribed antidiabetic agents should be educated on the importance of monitoring their blood glucose levels regularly, following a healthy diet, and engaging in regular physical activity. For example, patients with type 2 diabetes prescribed metformin should be instructed on how to monitor their blood glucose levels and to make lifestyle modifications such as following a low-carbohydrate diet and engaging in regular physical activity. NSAIDs. Patients prescribed NSAIDs should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication, such as stomach ulcers and kidney damage, and how to manage them. For example, patients prescribed ibuprofen for pain management should be instructed to take the medication with food to reduce the risk of stomach ulcers and to monitor for signs of kidney damage, 
such as decreased urine output or swelling in the legs or feet. Antihistamines. Patients prescribed antihistamines should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication, such as drowsiness, dry mouth, and constipation. For example, patients prescribed diphenhydramine for allergies should be instructed to avoid activities that require mental alertness, such as driving or operating machinery, until they know how the medication affects them. Statins. Patients prescribed statins should be educated on the importance of monitoring their cholesterol levels regularly and making lifestyle modifications, such as following a low-fat diet and engaging in regular physical activity. For example, patients prescribed atorvastatin for high cholesterol should be instructed to monitor their cholesterol levels regularly and to make lifestyle modifications, such as reducing their intake of saturated and trans fats and increasing their intake of fruits and vegetables. Antipsychotics. Patients prescribed antipsychotics should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication, such as weight gain, metabolic changes, and movement disorders. For example, patients prescribed risperidone for schizophrenia should be instructed to monitor their weight and to report any significant changes to their healthcare provider. Diuretics. Patients prescribed diuretics should be educated on the importance of monitoring their fluid and electrolyte balance and the possible side effects of the medication, such as dehydration and low potassium levels. For example, patients prescribed furosemide for heart failure should be instructed to monitor their fluid intake and output and to report any significant changes to their healthcare provider. Proton Pump Inhibitors Patients prescribed proton pump inhibitors should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication, such as stomach upset and diarrhea, and how to manage them. For example, patients prescribed omeprazole for acid reflux should be instructed to take the medication with food to reduce the risk of stomach upset and to monitor for signs of diarrhea or other gastrointestinal side effects. Opioids Patients prescribed opioids should be counseled on the possible side effects of the medication, such as drowsiness, constipation, and respiratory depression. For example, patients prescribed oxycodone for pain management should be instructed to avoid activities that require mental alertness, such as driving or operating machinery, until they know how the medication affects them. They should also be instructed to monitor for signs of constipation and to manage it with lifestyle modifications and medication if necessary. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more informative content like this.